at Kimbra on the Gold Coast and I'm pleased that there are some other primary school teachers <laughs> here this evening because I thought the same thing. I thought I'd be talking um, about something at a different level of audience. So some things, um, those are on Twitter and Instagram, some things that you can ask me about if you are interested is the summer model, using technology to transform learning, um, reading, so model um, different types of reading instruction, Navi Before You Teach Me, which is a program we do at our school, Global Connections, and I host um, the TLAP Down Under chat on a Sunday evening. would love people to join in when and if they wanted to. I'm speaking today about um, using empathy, exploring empathy with learners using literature. So I love reading and I love Twitter, and Twitter's the reason I'm here today. I wouldn't be here otherwise, um, and wouldn't know anyone else without it. So of course it seemed only natural for me to combine those two interests that I have. Um, I started with, a couple of weeks ago I was reading a blog post by Trevor McKenzie, who came out and presented at our school earlier this year. And in it, the, con the post was, what are the conditions in which learning thrives? And in that he wrote, in my opinion, learning thrives when students are engaged in finding meaning in their experience at school and in their learning. They feel fulfilled, they feel happy, they feel at times challenged and stretched. They feel ownership and pride, they feel belonging, they feel. Um, so then he identified 10 um, conditions in which we can nurture the whole child and hope that learning will thrive. So the one that I'm speaking on and um, talking about is empathy. So empathy, the definition is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. Um, it's a Brené Brown quote. I don't know about anyone else. I'm sort of right, a bit obsessed with Brené Brown <laughs> over the last 12 months or so. Um, so her definition is empathy is not connecting to an experience, it's connecting to the emotions that underpin the experience. A lot of the times we talk about empathy as in walking in another person's shoes. It's not necessarily that though, it's connecting to the experience they have because we, it's all relevant to your experience. We can't, I guess, truly understand um, or feel the same as what another person would feel, but we can connect to those feelings and that experience that they have had. Um, empathy is one of the five elements of emotional intelligence as well um, and is one of the most important social skills a child or anyone can learn. The ability to recognise how people feel is important to success in life, but even more importantly, empathy is a necessary skill to have in order to make a meaningful contribution to the world. Um, and all of the, even the um, sustainable development goals, um, a lot of the learning around those, it, it revolves around us having empathy for others and for the situations and the conditions that they have in order to then seek a solution to help those people. All right, so that's the read aloud. But the benefits of teaching empathy in the classroom include building positive classroom culture and strengthening the community. They learn to understand one another and build relationships on trust. Um, so the reason I guess I've chosen a read aloud, even um, in high school, the read aloud is still a really, um, in my opinion, a really useful and valuable strategy to use with students. Um, a lot of these, I guess, are the primary or the younger learning to read um, skills that can be developed. But probably even the one down the bottom is that model, those think alouds and modeling those thought processes, especially as texts become increasingly complex. And surprisingly, picture books are quite complex. <coughs> texts. They're not easy books for students to read. But they're all the things that we can focus on when we do a read aloud with our class. Um, the benefits of global connections. Our students develop <coughs> a broader awareness of the world beyond their, their school, their community, city, state, country. Um, I find that a lot of our students are quite insulated. Even though they're more connected than we've ever been, I think this in, in some ways they're more disconnected in or because we're connecting through a device we're not connecting as people um, they're not aw as aware of the things going on around them they don't watch the news anymore they're, they're not having those conversations at home um, so you know we really need to foster those that awareness within our students um, it's you know looking at the similarities and differences across the world and enhance cultural perspectives give students a new audience 
for their work and their learning as well, which um, you know can give them that boost of motivation and increase engagement when they know there's somebody else to talk to or to um, show their work to. Um, they can develop empathy through action and re acquire real world communication skills, which we know are important in today's society. So the combined overall benefits um, using I uh, use the Twitter slow chat format, so it the time zone differences can be um, eliminated in that sense because you just you you engage in the time that suits each class, um, and then they come back and check obviously the next day. So there'll often be um, things done overnight, and um, then that provides lots of other discussions. Um, we record a video. I'll explain the process, but we record a video of students reading the book. So it gives them an opportunity to hear other students read um, and other teachers read, other, someone other than their teacher who they hear their voice all the time. Um, and it values the host class's active involvement in the reading process. It caters for a range of learners. So younger students can join in with the teacher. Um, discussions, older students can uh, answer the questions independently um, using a variety of ways. Uh, we used iTunes U for the discussion feature for our um, kindness read aloud earlier in the year. Um, we've used Seesaw, which I've got an example, and tweeting with their teacher. Obviously, um, my students aren't tweeting, or the students that participate aren't tweeting themselves. It's done with the teacher. Generates interest in other communities around the world and encourages students to wonder and question, which leads to learning across a range of content and subject areas such as, you know, um, we're talking to this school in Winnipeg, Canada, how long, well, how far away is that and how long would it take us to get there? What are the different ways that we can get there? Um, looking at that, looking at the time zone differences, so calculating, well, what time is it there now? Um, so there's, there's that maths, you've got science with seasons, because obviously we, our kindness read aloud was in February, so it was very hot. Um, North America was in the depths of a deep freeze, so there was a lot of those conversations happening and obviously the geography. And engaging in the social and emotional learning, it's last on the list but it's by no means the least important um, as we know with the social and emotional learning and having a call to action. So it started with in February, um, in January I was on Twitter and I saw um, someone that I connected with in Canada did a mindset read aloud. Um, we weren't at school yet, so uh, we couldn't participate, but I really liked the idea. Her name was Annick Roke and um, thought it was a fantastic idea. So we started our school year with a kindness read aloud. The reason I chose kindness for us specifically is that our cohort at school, traditionally we have a lot of behaviour issues um, in that school, in that year level for some reason. I don't know if other schools find grade fours. So I started the year on class. Um, I'm currently a teaching and learning coordinator. I'm on class one day a week still, which is a grade four class. Um, so that's where it started at the start of the year. And then February's Kindness Month, or there's National Kindness, International Day of Kindness or something, and Valentine's Day. So it sort of all seemed to, to fit nicely. I just put a call out or I asked some people that I knew if they'd be interested in joining in with us. They chose the books based on the theme um, and they developed their questions and developed their videos around that. So they were the four books that were used for our Kindness Read Lab. Then each week they, um, I'd write a blog post to share the video and the questions, but they would also, like everyone was also tweeting, so you would have your introduction slide. Um, which everyone would respond to, um, then you'd tweet out your questions. And over the course of the week, depending on when it fit within each class's timetable, they would respond. So we always did it on a Monday, um, which obviously was Sunday in North America, and then, but the other class in my school, they did theirs on a Thursday. So it was really flexible in how it fit into people's schedules. Uh, and there's just some examples of, you know, how you can, the responses. The other way that it can be done, which currently we're doing the empathy read aloud now, um, my cohort is, and the Twitter one starts next week, 
we've recorded the video and put it onto our Seesaw Plus. So it's mirroring, in a way, the Twitter aspect. Um, so our students are also getting that digital citizenship learning when it comes to posting their answers um, and commenting on other people's posts. So they watch the video which has the questions embedded in the video. So it'll have a number of pages read by a student. Then the reading will stop. There'll be the question slide, the teacher reading the question and then the, the story continues. And then they can answer. Um, so this is using Seesaw where um, they're answering that and then they comment on each other's answers. Um, the empathy has come from, well, obviously the, the, what I spoke about at the start, but also our task writing this term, they're writing picture books for other students and for an audience. And so we're wanting to teach, build in some social emotional learning within that. And they're the texts that we're doing for our Empathy Read Aloud. Starts next week if anyone's interested. So if you want to find out more information, um, I have a blog post at my blog about the Empathy Read Aloud. If you're wanting to see the kindness one, the, that's the hashtag. And then as of next week, the Spark Empathy RA will be the hashtag for the Empathy. Thank you.